Tonight we're going to tackle some power series, and to say that we're going to see some of these on the upcoming practice exam would be the understatement of the century. So we're going to really uh, cover a lot of different varieties tonight. We're going to cover these from every angle possible, and it's going to feel like we're jumping around and being a little sporadic and stuff, but it all it's all going to tie together and and uh, make sense hopefully in the end. Um, we've done really well with the generic Taylor series, and this one's centered at A. Um, we've done really well on this on our Monday Bite Size Quizzes. So we could typically we expand it out like this. This is uh, this would be the first four terms which you see right here, or sometimes we'll call it the third degree. So just remember that if they want the third degree, they are actually asking for four terms. Or we could express it in summation notation right here. It's a little tidier, more concise way of expressing it. But anyway, what I wanted to do is we've and we're going to get into the big four here before too long. But I wanted to give you an example where the big four won't help us. In other words, we're going to have to build a Taylor polynomial from scratch, from the ground up, and it's going to take a lot of, you know, just kind of put your hard hats on and uh, grab your lunch pail and let's go to work type of mentality. So um, let's see if we can get started here. The first thing I noticed was they wanted an order of three. That's like a, saying a third degree. So again, we need four terms, actually. Um, we're centered at zero, so it actually is a Maclaurin. But here's my function. And this function is not really related to any of the big four that we've memorized. So uh, we can pretty much throw the big four out the window right now. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to, we, we know that f of x is equal to radical 1 plus x. I'm going to have to calculate the first three derivatives by hand and then evaluate them all at zero. So go ahead, hit pause, do that on your own, come back and check mine. So here's what I've got so far. I calculated my first three derivatives. I then, in the green color, I evaluated uh, the original function in the first three derivatives at x equals zero and got my corresponding values. Now here's where a very common mistake occurs. A lot of students fall in love prematurely with choice A because of the coefficients match the derivative values. What we've got to still do here is follow the, the plan according to the Taylor theorem. And basically what he says here is, uh, let's see, we're going to start with f of zero. And then we're going to add f prime of 0 times x. And then here's where it starts to get more interesting. It's going to be the second derivative evaluated as 0 divided by 2 factorial x squared. And then we're going to have plus 3 eighths divided by 3 factorial x cubed. So just clean up these coefficients a little bit. 1 plus 1 half of x minus 1 eighth x squared plus... Let's see, 3 factorial 6, 8 times 6. How about 3 over 42? We might even be able to reduce that. Probably that coefficient is going to be 1 over maybe 14 if I'm doing that quick on the fly here. So let's see if that matches anyone. Let's make sure our 1 eighth is negative. Uh, did I... Oh, yeah, my math is not good. My math is not good. Uh, this should be 48. 6 times 8 is 48, which then makes us 16. So you can get a... A little chuckle there, laugh at the math teacher. Um, so anyway, I'm liking, let's see, we wanted the 1 eighth to be negative. Let's see, how about choice B here? Yeah, I think choice B is a winner. So that's an example of building one from scratch. Our hope is that we don't have to build too many of those from scratch because it is time consuming and uh, there's a lot of number crunching that takes place. So we always kind of keep our fingers crossed that we run into something that is related to the big four. And so here's the big four that we've done really well with. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that you guys are going to nail these big four. What I want to talk about is how to use them. And for example, my first example would be this. Let's try what if f of x was equal to x to the fifth times e to the x squared. We're going to turn this into a three-step process, and we've seen a lot of improvement in this. I want you to first of all just start with e to the x. List out the first three or four terms in the general term. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to substitute an x squared in for each x. So just emphasize the word substitute. And then last but not least, we can attack our final function here where we're no longer going to substitute. What we're going to do here is we're now going to distribute in x to the fifth to each term. So for instance, when you're substituting, you're actually going to end up multiplying the exponents together because you have a power raised to a power. But when you distribute x to the fifth, you're now going to add all the exponents together. So just a couple of tricks there. So here's a, a, a weird example where they've given us a function, the natural log of x plus 1, and they want, uh, you know, we could just make anything up, uh, the first four terms and the general term or whatever, you know, something like that. And you're thinking, wow, that's not even remotely related to any of my big four. So you're thinking, oh, geez, i got to do this one by hand. And you could. You certainly could. You could take the first three or four derivatives and evaluate them as zero and whatnot. 
Um, but I've got a shortcut here for you. If you recognize this, do you agree that that function is equivalent to the integral of 1 over 1 plus x? Do you agree with that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build something. And in fact, I'm going to rearrange the denominator. I'm going to say 1 minus negative x. It fits the geometric series perfectly where my a value is a 1 and my r value is negative x. And, and I'm just going to substitute a negative x in for each of those x's. So instead of 1 plus x, it's now going to be 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, uh, so on and so on until I get to x to the nth and so forth. Now what I could do is all I've got to do is integrate term by term to get my blue function. So as I get ready to integrate that rascal, it's going to be x minus 1 half x squared uh, plus 1 third x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the fourth, da 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 da, and how about 1 over n plus 1 x raised to the n plus 1, and that's going to fall off my screen, but that should be x to the n plus 1. So if you recognize the shortcut, you can really save yourself a lot of time. Now on the contrary, um, sticking with kind of the same idea here, what if they wanted g of x and that was 1 over the quantity x plus 1 squared? Kind of along the same lines. If you want to do that one by hand, you're more than welcome to, but I think it's going to be a big waste of time. Did you know that that is simply the derivative of who? Who's that the derivative of? Negative 1 over quantity x plus 1. Okay, and so I know it's a you know it's a little hard to see, but hopefully you agree with me after I you know kind of show it to you there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build the green guy. That's negative one over one minus negative x. And what we've got here is we've got an a value of negative one that we're going to distribute later. But first of all, we got to substitute the negative x. So I'm going to do the substitution and then the distributing. So the first term, well, it's originally one, and then we distributed negative. The second term was negative x, but then we distributed negative. Uh, so you kind of see the pattern here. So forth and so forth. So now all we got to do is derive the green guy to end up with the blue guy. So the derivative of negative 1 would be 0. And then we've got a 1 minus 2x plus 3x squared until we got to nx to the n minus 1. Something like that. We're going to get away from our Taylor power series for a little while and take advantage of the geometric power series and the rules that apply to it. Now, just remind yourself right off the bat that any series starting at 0, ending at infinity, a r raised to the nth power is equivalent to a over 1 minus r. All right. So we could say that that is the function that the series converges to. And both a and r, and this might be worth making asterisks in your notebook, both a and r can be functions of x. They don't, a lot of times we kind of tell ourselves that a has to be a constant. That's not necessarily true. Both a and r can be functions of x. So as I look at my first one up here, part a, I've recognized that the a value is a 1 and my r value is x over 5. So that particular series is equal to f of x as a function, uh, a over 1 minus r. And then probably just to clean it up, make it look a little tidier, we'll multiply each term by 5 to make it look a little cleaner. And that's the function that the given series converges to. Uh, let's see, I'll do b right here. I'll kind of swing this way. That function would be 1 over 1 plus x over 10 because we have the double negatives. And again, we'll just kind of clean it up a little bit, multiply everything by 10, and you'll get that type of series. Switch back to green. I'm going to do part c down here. The function here... Uh, the a value is going to be x to the fourth on top, and then we got 1 minus 2x on the bottom, and that's, that's about as clean as we're going to make it. D might be one of my favorite ones of all time. I absolutely love D. thought it was very creative. Kudos to whoever wrote that question. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the series. So we're going to decompose it, say x to the 3n times x to the fifth. Okay. Now I need to, get, I need to ask myself, what's being raised to the nth power? Okay. Who is being raised to the nth? It's actually, let's put x to the fifth here. x cubed is being raised to the nth power. Do you, is that, do you agree with that? So now we could say that my function is just x to the fifth all over 1 minus x cubed. So I thought that was a pretty interesting decomposition. Make sure you, you keep going until you have one specific quantity being raised to the nth power. 
So this time we're just going to work backwards. We're going to say, okay, if my function fits this mold right here, I can then express it as a series, um, geometric specifically, in this form. And so we just have to make sure it's in this original form right here. So on this first one, I've got an A of 1 and I've got an R of 3x. It's perfect. It's ready to go. And so we could just say 3x to the nth power. Um, and basically, I'm going to cheat a little bit on these, and we're going to assume that they all start at 0 and end at infinity. Speaking of which, we want to make sure we find the interval of convergence. We don't have to check the endpoints. We know that that common ratio has to fall within the interval, negative 1 to 1. So negative 1 third to positive 1 third would be a beautiful interval of convergence. Uh, for part B here, um, let's see, I need to divide everything by 2 right away. So I got 3x squared all over 1 and I'm going to say minus negative x over 2. So then the series, or yeah, yeah, the series, 3x squared and then negative x over 2 to the nth power. Interval of convergence, let's take a look at this, would be, let's see, we took the absolute value of r and said it had to fall within that interval. So we got negative 2 all the way to positive 2 would be my interval with a radius of convergence of 2. All right, let's take part C. Let's see if we can squeeze them in down here. Hopefully you can follow the arrows. Don't be afraid to rewind these as needed. I'm going to divide everything by 5 first and foremost. That's not just recommended. That's a mandatory move because that first term on the bottom has to be 1, and then it's got to be a minus. And then we got x over 5. So here the series is going to be 5 and then x over 5 to the nth power. Radius of convergence would be from, or I should say the interval is going to be from negative 5 to 5 with a radius of 5. All right, we're coming down the home stretch. For D here, I'm going to divide everything by 36 first. So on the top, I've got x over 36, 1 minus x squared over 36. So now I've got, we're fitting the mold. We've got a series, x over 36 is my a value x squared over 36 is my r value, and that's raised to the nth power. Now the interval of convergence is rather interesting. We're going to say that negative 1 falls on the left, all the way to positive 1. We're going to multiply everything, or, yeah, multiply everything by 36 first of all. See, that 36 you thought was pretty ugly, and now you're finding out it's pretty friendly. Square root. Um, we're not really taking the square root of both endpoints. We're just kind of thinking realistically, like what what are legal values of x that would uh, land me within this interval? And I'm going to say, as long as x is between negative six and six, any number within that interval will, uh, by the time I square it, put me inside of that interval there. So um, I know if you think of it in terms of taking the square root, you're going to run into imaginary numbers on the left edge, and that's not really. We don't want to get into those. Uh, just tell you, obviously, if x is negative 5, by the time you square it, you'll be within this interval. And you can even plug it back into the original. You know, Try plugging in a negative 5 up here, and you'll find out that it does fit, and it's very legit. The last one, um, we had. this is the only one that wasn't centered at 0. The a is 1, and the r value is x minus 5. So I just instantly went to x minus 5 to the nth power. And the interval here, let's see add 5 to everything, we're going to go from 4 to 6, and the radius is 1. A lot of times it's more common on the multiple choice section to see them ask for a co coefficient only. Um, and so that's what I want to address here in our last three slides. We're coming down the home stretch. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the series specifically for sine of x squared. Now, remind yourself, sine is an odd function, so let's just start off by building sine. The first term is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, and I'm actually thinking I might be good right there because we're kind of all mathematicians have great foresight, and we're going to now substitute an x squared. So the first term is x squared, and then if I take x squared and I cube it, I get x to the 6, and right there is my moneymaker. So the coefficient of x to the 6 would just be 1 over 3 factorial, also known as 1 sixth. Here's a similar example here in, in, in number 13. They said, first of all, f's a function such that f prime is sine of x squared. So let's pick up where we left off on the last problem. We already know that sine of x squared is going to be x squared minus x to the sixth over 3 factorial. Just for fun, the next term, 
let's see, would have been x to the 10th, I believe. Does that sound right? Because it would have been 5 factorial. Yeah, it would have been x squared to the 5th. Yeah, yeah, second-guessing myself there. Anyway, so this right here is f prime. So in order to get f, we're going to have to integrate all of those terms. So for f, the first term would be 1 third x cubed. And then we'd have, let's see, x to the seventh all over 42 because it was really 7 times 6. And then we'd have x to the eleventh all over 11 times 5 factorial and so forth. So the coefficient of x to the seventh would be right here, 1 42nd. Make sure it is negated. Let's see, what's this rascal got for us? Now the coefficient of x cubed for e to the 2x, you know what, that's not challenging enough. I'm kind of bored with that. Let's make it, uh, let's make it x to the 4th e to the 2x. How about that? Okay, so none of these choices will really pertain. And we want to go see if we can find, uh oh, I might have made that too big. Let's just make it x, I'm sorry. So anyway, let's see, e to the x is going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, yada, yada, yada. e to the 2x is going to be 1 plus 2x plus 4x squared over 2 factorial plus 8x cubed over 3 factorial. So now if I multiply by x or distribute an x, I'm going to get 2x squared plus 4x cubed over 2 factorial. And that's the one they were asking for. So I would say this rascal's coefficient is 4 over 2. That's just going to be a nice 2. Um, so just a little extra practice there. Well, that does it for tonight. Hopefully you still got your head above water. We'll tackle some real feisty ones tomorrow. And, and uh, you know, the sky is the limit when it comes to their creativity. We need to really focus on the basics so that when we see that novel a rigorous problem that we've never seen before. We're able to adapt and uh, you know attack it from different angles. Hopefully, so good luck. We'll catch you tomorrow.